Hello everyone, my name is Malik L. Train, personal trainer, um, also host of Health Awareness Talk for SirBroadcast.com. Uh, anyway, um, I'm here today um, interviewing Mr. Tom Molotian. Uh, he's president, owner of Vita Gym Enterprises, also the book, which is quite good. The Complete Master Cleanse and also Beyond the Master Cleanse. I've, lot of lo I've learned a lot of information today. Uh, we're going to be going over essential oils. Um, I've been hearing about essential oils for years. And I've been hearing a lot of crazy stories, successful stories about essential oils. How they've been working for cancer to help people to stop smoking. To get rid of uh, stuff, um, uh, mold in the house. So as a little test... For people out there who want to put essential oils to the test to see if it works for them or not. These are the topics we're going to be covering tonight. Um, we're going to talk about how to use essential oils to um, perhaps to stop alcoholism and smoking. How they, they can help with arthritis, migraine, with memory and critical thinking skills for high school and college. And also uh, hopefully say mention something on Alzheimer's for deep nightly sleep and daily inner peace. For money, motivation, and letting go. Uh, number six, will willpower to stick to a cleanse, a detox, or whatever diet that you're going to do. Number seven, uh, today is October uh, Domestic Violence Month. I want to know if essential oils can actually help people who's in a domestic violent or hostile environment situation. Number eight, uh, sexual transmitted diseases is an epidemic. Can essential oils help with that? And number nine, there's a lot of people in my community and abroad who got toxic mold, toxic mold and termites in their house. And if it possibly can help with that, um, I got Mr. Tom Wolushin here. He's here and he's going to uh, give us a little five minute uh, minimum topic on each one of these at the maximum about eight. Please, if you want to know more about any of these topics, contact Mr. Wolotion and learn how to do it right to learn how to do it right the right way and if it works for you and if it doesn't work for you okay give us a call I'll be doing another show to get in people's results all right how you doing Mr. Wolotion I'm doing very 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 well thank you very much I'm uh, as I told you near Alaska at the moment I'm uh, yeah. up here my son was in a uh, car accident and he was a passenger in a vehicle and it rolled and uh, he was uh, somewhat injured and so I flew up here as soon as I could to uh, work on him and I've been using guess what I've been using on him essential, but, oils. Uh, essential oils yes and uh, uh -huh. and uh, also his wife I've been uh, working on her and putting some oils on and they've actually both been feeling uh, dramatically better so I'm really happy that I did come up here and again, thank you for having me on the show. It's a pleasure to be here. Always having the pleasure of being on this show, on this show, sir. Okay, um, essential store. I've been hearing it about years because I know a lot of my friends who got money and stuff. I mean, they be using essential oils, and evidently it must work because they keep on buying them again. So, Tom, can you please tell us what exactly are essential oils? How they work? Their different grades, um, or uh, the different qualities of essential oils, please. Sure. Um, well, essential oils are derived from plants, trees, some of them from the peels of uh, your skins of uh, certain citrus fruits, of course, like grapefruit and orange and um, tangerine, etc., etc., lemon, lime. Um, but most of them are derived, you know, like things like basil, marjoram, uh, you know, things like uh, ginger is another one. Uh, all the fir trees, you know, like pine and spruce, those all produce essential oils. Anything that you can rub and you smell that has that, uh, you know, that aromatic smell to it, those, those are essential oils. And some people refer to essential oils as the life blood of the plant. The, the essential oils do various things. They keep the plant healthy. They act as a part of the immune system. They prevent uh, viruses or bacteria or funguses or molds or parasites from invading the plant. Uh, because they are toxic to many of the spe of the they they produce these these uh, chemicals or these compounds to repel things. Um, they uh, also to help if a plant is damaged. You know, when a tree breaks a limb off, it will produce 
resin to cover it. And again, that keeps insects and things from, you know, burrowing into that part of the tree, and it also helps it to heal that, that part of the tree. Mm-hmm. Um, essential oils have been around for centuries. They found over 300 liters in King Tut's tomb after it was opened up, and these were uh, these oils were kept in, and I think alabaster jars that were sealed for you know thousands of years, over four thousand years, and they were still viable. They were still usable. Huh. So they have a lifespan of thousands of years of ke- if they're kept out of the heat and out of light. Now that's regular essential oils. Now things that to, like most of the stuff you would buy today are not truly essential oils. Uh, they're they're not uh, what some people refer to as loosely therapeutic grade. All the essential oils that you can basically buy in North America and any of the stores that you would go in and purchase them from are perfume grade. Mm-hmm. They're actually, if you were to take them internally or apply them topically to uh, treat yourself, you could actually cause more harm than good because they can be, they're often contaminated or adulterated with petrochemical compounds. The, the industry is one of the most corrupt industries in the health food field because almost all people you meet are completely and totally ignorant or naive of what an essential oil is, how it's formed, how it should be tested, how it should be distilled, and how it can be used or properly used. And uh, so there's all this misinformation. And so most people will, you know, open bottles and they smell them and they go, oh, that smells nice. Most of these that I've smelled out of stores, they actually don't smell good. They actually smell bad. And I've had many people who will open up their oils that they purchased five or six years ago, and they will now smell off or rancid or bad. I have oils that are 15 years old that I open them up, and they smell just as good as the day that I first bought them. Mm. And that's because there's nothing in there that would degrade or, um, you know, uh, there, there, there are actually no impurities or additives to them. And to the point where I've done to test these oils, when I've been on the master cleanse, I've drank the equivalent of almost, well, about 12 milliliters of essential oil a day. That's 240 drops. Wow. And when I tell people in the industry, people would say that's dangerous. I go, yes, it would be dangerous if I used your oils. So you because saying, you, so you saying so that the uh, only type of uh, oils, um, yeah, that's crazy. But the only type of oils that you recommend is the ones that you're actually uh, using to actually ingest, right? Yes, like many years ago, before I started using this particular company's oils, I had been exposed to essential oils, and I bought several different brands, and I used them in my practice, and I found that they did absolutely nothing. And uh, when one of my students introduced me to this particular company's oils, I was still, I kept telling her, you know, I bought the t-shirt, I rented the movie, I <laughs> bought the book, I, you know, I've you know, been there, done all of that. And she kept that. arguing with me. And finally, I relented and I said, okay. And uh, one of the oils I bought is, believe it or not, to make you rich. And I just said, what a pile of crap that is. I didn't yeah. believe it. And that oil within... I started using it, and within about three or four months, my income went up dramatically to the point where I think my income tripled or quadrupled that year. Wow. And I have many people who will take this oil very skeptically from me and then come back and go, wow, my business increased. You know, in fact, I was talking to uh, this one woman who's an acupuncturist where I lived, and she's been using New Abundance, and she had not... Her practice was not very busy, and in the last probably four or five months, she's my daughter went to see her. I referred her to go, you know, try an acupuncture treatment, and she said, I only got in because somebody canceled an appointment. It would be at least a week now. So it's, you know, and it's really made a difference in her practice, and her husband as well. He came to my house after using the oil and said, I tell everybody about it. He said it made such a difference. So, and people go, well, how can this be? How can an oil make you rich? And that's... The thing is, the uh, the oil doesn't make you rich. It makes you tap into that part of your psyche where you allow richness or abundance into your life. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's kind of like we have, all of us have numerous capabilities or possibilities, and some more so than others. But all of us are open to health and well-being, fitness, uh, generosity, forgiveness, uh hate, joy, you know, revenge. We can have any of those things. And you can use essential oils to sort of open up those doors that you've closed shut. You know, like I was working on a woman and I 
said, you have a lot of hate for somebody. And she, you know, she was from Alabama and she's, she said, yeah, and she was very, she was a Baptist and very religious. I said, well, you need to forgive them. And she kept saying, you know, I can't. And I said, yes, you can. And she kept saying, I can't. I said, you can, I'll accept that you won't, but I won't accept that you can't. And while she wasn't looking, I put um, a, an oil blend on her called forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And within two seconds, she was saying to herself, you know, I, I'm feeling like maybe I can, what did you put on my ears? <laughs> and I said, forgiveness. And she said, I knew it. And she said, that oil within two seconds put her into a state of mind where she was ready to forgive. But when she figured out what I had done, she immediately shut it down. Shut the door. So what oils do is just create, in terms of your psyche or your awareness, a possibility or potential. It, it makes it much, it's kind of like if you have a doorway to abundance. You may have it locked shut. You may have a steel gate over it. You may have guards in front of it. And what the essential oil does is just opens the door. You still have to step through that door and allow yourself to be open to it. Now, how these oils work is that you have to understand, where do they come from? Well, they come from plants. Well, how do plants make them? Well, how do plants grow? And people go, well, you know, from the sun and water and I go, in the soil, I go, yeah, from the sun. Mm -hmm. The plant uses the process called photosynthesis, and the plant actually chemically, through its own chemical processes, makes essential oils, like in a laboratory. Mm -hmm. It makes them naturally using sunlight and water and carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. So the plant takes hydrogen, or, you know, the hydrogen from water and oxygen from water, carbon from water and oxygen, or I'm sorry, carbon from CO2 gas or carbon dioxide and the oxygen from there and builds molecules. <clears throat> and these molecules have different properties. Some of them are antiviral, some of them are antibacterial, some are um, blood thinners, some stop pain, some mm -hmm. promote nerve growth, some promote cellular development, some kill cancer cells. These, these essential oils have thousands of different properties. And depending on the plant that you get, you'll have a different result. Mm -hmm. And when you blend from oils together from different plants, you can get very specialized um, uh, properties. Like this, this one oil that you know I said makes you rich. It's it's got uh, frankincense, myrrh, orange, patchouli, ginger. Uh, cinnamon and clove and spruce all together. Mm -hmm. and you'd go, well, why does that work? And well, the thing is, is how do you test an essential oil to know its sort of pro its properties or its quality? Well, what they do is they run what's called a GC or a gas chromatograph. Now, an essential oil can have 200, 300, 400, 500 or more chemical compounds or organic compounds. So what they do is they put this oil into a a machine that has a long spiral or like a, a, a copper tubing wound up and they they sort of run this oil through this long tube maybe a hundred meters long like over 300 feet mm -hmm. and as they stretch the oil through this long tube the oils separate themselves and the lightest molecular oils go uh, end up at one end and the heaviest molecular compounds at the other end so you get this differentiated compound it's no longer homogeneous they're all separate and then what they do when that's done is they push it through the end of the tube and they ignite it as a flame and they burn it and each compound burns with its own color in its own specific time so if you have a, a, a sample that burns for a hundred minutes so that's the sample, and if one color burns for three minutes, then three percent of that oil is that of that compound is a part is a part of that oil. Mm -hmm. If another color burns for ten minutes, that it means that compound is ten percent. So, um, basically, when these compounds are in your body, when you ingest them or put them on your skin topically, and they're absorbed through the skin, your body has to do something to them. And what what is that? Well, it metabolizes them. It burns them. The crossover time from your skin to your bloodstream is one to three seconds. Wow. It's in your bloodstream. Now, the half-life of an essential oil is basically about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So that in, if you get one drop into your skin, into the bloodstream, in 10 minutes, it's a half a drop. In 10 more minutes, it's a quarter. In another 10 minutes, it's an eighth, a sixteenth, two. Within about two hours, all of that essential oil has been metabolized. Well, what happens when something metabolizes? It burns. 
Well, when it burns, it releases the light oh, from the plant oh, that gotcha. was put there by photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. So essential oils are really liquid light. Liquid colors. Mm -hmm. Now, I know somebody who sees auras or energy. Mm -hmm. And when I showed her this oil, she said it's reds, oranges, and yellows. Now, in color therapy, the color red is a sexual stimulant. Mm -hmm. Stanley Burroughs said red is the color for sales. Mm -hmm. It's a good, you know, good salesmanship. And it's also a good color for strength and vitality for athletes. Mm -hmm. um, it's also, as I said, you know, they call it like an, a sexual stimulant or an aphrodisiac because when you go to, say, um, Amsterdam, they call it the red light district because mm -hmm. red stimulates the sexual impulse. Mm -hmm. Orange in color therapy, which you're wearing orange, is the color of success. Mm -hmm. And yellow is the color of confidence and courage. Mm -hmm. So when you, th you think of something that lends all of those properties to your body or your psyche mm -hmm. by applying this liquid, you know, if that's true, it should work that way. And that's, I mean, it, it works. I mean, I, yeah. and I challenge people. I say, don't believe me. Please don't believe me. Don't trust me. Do it yourself and find out on your own. That's it. Does it work if you're dehydrated? Well, it sh there's no reason why it shouldn't. Um, the thing is that essential oils often cause cleansing in the body. So what an essential oil will do, like a lot of times when people are sick, say they, when they have diabetes, type 2 diabetes, the receptor sites for insulin are plugged with compounds, generally from petrochemical, you know, like from perfumes, from shampoos, conditioners, hairsprays, you know, from... Uh, dry cleaning, outgassing from carpets and furniture, etc. And those compounds, what they do is they block the receptor sites for insulin. And so insulin is, is kind of like a key that fits in a lock and it opens the door so that the body can start to use sugar or they, those cells can use sugar. But if they get plugged up, they don't work. So what essential oils will do is they'll actually, when they burn, they will, in a sense, burn the... Um, petrochemical compounds that are locked into the receptor sites mm -hmm. and when those receptor sites are now clean insulin will now fit in and the cell now works again and people can quite literally reverse uh, and it has been and I know of people who say they've done it using uh, essential oils I mean there's other ways as well yes now, that's a good coincidence that they use essential <coughs> oil and then uh, no, that's you know that's my experience I can't actually say it that's, exactly you know the case you have to find out on your own I mean myself with you know essential oils I had a, an outbreak of um, shingles on my rib cage and on my back it was a place where I had cracked one of my ribs mm -hmm. uh, skiing and uh, I had this you know irritation for about a week and I took Melissa essential oil I put one drop on each spot twice in one day and within a few seconds it completely went away and never bo it's never bothered me now for probably 14 years. Now, Melissa, it, when it, in its pure state, uh, you know, a bottle, a, a, a very small bottle is about $160. Mm -hmm. It's more than a dollar a drop. People go, well, that's expensive. Well, I put on four drops and my shingles was gone in like literally momentarily. Mm -hmm. And I have people who've called me and they've had terrible shingles, discomfort and pain for six months, nine months, a year. And they've spent who knows how much trying to get themselves well. Whereas when you get the right essential oil, the, the effect can be, the, the way essential oils work, because they go into your skin so quickly, it usually mm -hmm. only takes a matter of seconds to know whether it's working or not. Mm -hmm. It's not like a week later. It's not two weeks later. You shouldn't wait more than a minute. I often don't wait more than 10 seconds mm -hmm. after I put an oil on. And they either say, yeah, it's working or it's not. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that you could be, there could be 10 or 15 oils that you would apply for any specific condition, but only three or four or five may work really well for you, two or three may work sort of, and the rest of them not at all. Okay. And so that's why you sometimes have to try three or four or five different oils. You have to find the right one. Okay, we got already uh, 20 minutes into the show. Let's oh. go ahead and start the, to, I know, I do that, I get into it too. <laughs> Let's start what people really want to know. Number one. How do you stop alcoholism and also smoking with essential oils? Well, first you have to understand what's going on emotionally. Alcohol is trying to, is, alcoholism is suppressing fear. People are afraid. That's why they call it a shot of courage. Smoking is suppressing anger and frustration. It, it constricts your blood vessels. When you're angry, they expand. 
So um, in Stanley Burrow's book, and I've used this successfully, like uh, he'll say, do the master cleanse for either. My teacher was alcoholic, and he did the master cleanse. And in Stanley Burrow's book, he says, use clove to stop smoking. And I've had people, and you take clove as a very hot oil. So you take about a half a drop and stick it at the back of your tongue, and it and people will tell me that it reduces the urge to smoke by about 50%, almost momentarily. Hmm. Now, for people who have, um, there's then there'd be also oils that would work to uh, help with sort of the emotional, with smoking that's anger. So anything that sort of calms you down, like lavender is a good one. Uh, Roman chamomile can work very well. Roman chamomile would work very well for more for alcoholics because Roman chamomile is called Roman chamomile because during the Roman Empire, the early Romans would put on all of their armies the essential oil, Roman or chamomile. And Roman chamomile gives you confidence and courage. Can you imagine, Malik, if we were, say we were foot soldiers in the, in the Roman ranks, you know, in the legion, mm -hmm. and we had to go fight the barbarians. And I said to you, oh, Malik, I'm having a bad hair day. I, I don't feel like swinging my sword or too hard. Will you look after? You want everybody on your left and right at their peak performance because you don't want somebody slacking off beside you and somebody sticking a sword in your side because the guy beside you is, is wigging out or whatever. So they used Roman chamomile is that, you know, to give confidence and courage. And it works. I mean, I've put Roman chamomile on people, and they do things that they wouldn't normally, that they're afraid to do. Okay, so, so Tom, if we're, if we're an athlete getting ready for a game or something, you probably would say to use Roman chamomile in order to uh, get rid of our uh, whatever doubts and fears that maybe you have, so we can put 110% into it. Well, my daughter was a world-class wrestler. You don't know this, and she was at, we were at a competition, and she had to go up against a girl that had just won third place in the world. And all of the coaches, not her coach because he wasn't there, but all the coaches from the you know, kind of the province would be like the state, were all telling her to just do the best they could, she could, and they just expected her to lose, to fail. And I flew to the tournament, and when I got there, and she started crying, and I said, you haven't even wrestled this girl. And you're already quit. You've given up. So I put on Roman chamomile, and uh, I said, you have to wrestle somebody first. And she said, you know anything about this girl? She said, no. I said, well, just beat her in about 15 seconds so this girl is going to be watching you so that she can't see how you wrestle. And sure enough, my daughter beat her in 19 seconds, her first term, her first match. And the second match, within about three minutes, she won the match, hands down. Okay. Because and that was using, I used two different oils All on right. her. One. Yeah, I don't want to know what the other two are. I want people to contact you to know about those other two. Mm -hmm. That was a super tip for me. Thank you. That was worth the whole show just for <laughs> learning how to do that. <laughs> uh, Tom, uh, everybody who's listening to this radio show, Tom has some information to help you to get over fear before you were doing matches, whether basketball, football, wrestling, or whatever. I strongly advise you, if you're a coach, to contact Tom and to see what inform other information he has on that. Thank you, Tom. Uh, continue. Yeah, so um, and, and another thing often for athletes is just anything that will calm them down so that they're not feeling, you know, high, you know one of the things about when you're afraid, you're, you're using the, your reptilian mind at the you know, back of the brain stem. And so you're into fight or flight where I've got to, you know, run like, <laughs> like hell or pull out my sword and kill somebody. And the thing is, we don't have to do that today, generally. So you, anything that puts your uh, focuses your thinking into the frontal lobe, where you can think logically instead of through fear. Mm -hmm. So there's you know uh, a number of oils. Like you know the most commonly used oil is lavender for anything you know along those lines. But there's a lot of uh, uplifting. You know some of the pine and spruce trees, very specific ones. But if people call me, I'll get into some more of the details Thank with you. that. Thank you. Also, uh, we have five minutes. You got uh, three minutes on for smoking and alcoholism. I haven't heard you give any testimonials about people actually getting over smoking or alcoholism. Can you possibly give us some with essential oils? Well, um, I never usually use just one single aspect because I, I, you know, I will use essential oils. I get them cleansing, and um, you know, using uh, affirmations. But it's, it's, it's. 
Uh, I'd have to get into some of the tr the names of the specific sort of you know, oils uh, what those are. Uh, and basically, what and I, I want to know is has if people who have smoking and people who have uh, alcoholism through you have you been able to help them stop drinking alcohol? Have you been able oh. to help them stop smoking? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've had several people, and not just that, but you know, marijuana. Out of my my uh, younger brother was on Demerol. He had been, he was, he had had been, uh, he was alcoholic, and I, he had stopped drinking, and uh, he was now um, had been put on because of his pain on morphine. And of course, you get addicted to it, and then they put him on Demerol, and he was having issues with his uh, pharmacist. And he said, Tom, how do I stop this? And I, you know, give him, told him what to do. And uh, the clinic told him he would die if he went cold turkey. Wow. And he stopped his Demerol completely and lived. He, <laughs> he, you know, that was, right. that was many years ago. That was probably eight or nine years ago that he got himself off of the drugs. So it's, to me, it doesn't, I don't care if it's alcohol or marijuana or crack cocaine or it's, Sugar to me, they're all the same thing basically. Now, from various drug to another, there's slight changes or different oils I might suggest, but it's almost always the same. You're dealing with uh, an anxiety or a fear on an unconscious level. Mm -hmm. you know, like uh, you know, marijuana is is people who are uh, are unhappy. They're trying to make themselves happy by smoking marijuana. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, so it okay. Is. So for the clo uh, for the for the smoking, if one if somebody want to increase their chances of stopping smoking by fifty percent, they will look into uh, essential oil, um, a clove, clove, yes, right, and yeah. and they get the rest of the program. Once they see that that works, uh, if, as long as they use the correct brand uh, or the best quality oil. They may all uh, if they're really serious in the program. They want to they want to get back to you. It's fine to find out what the rest of that is, but you know they can sure. experiment with the club. But with the alcoholism, what essential oil would you use for that? I would generally recommend. I'd probably start with rum and chamomile because rum, as I said, alcoholism is usually a fear-based uh, dependency, you know, or addiction. Right. And it's unconscious, and people aren't aware of it, so they just drink to suppress their fear. So I would use Roman chamomile and, uh, you know, and, and other oils that tend to calm and not the, almost, in a sense, sedate, but to, mm -hmm. to just to make them feel more normal. Okay, and, okay. So for the smoking, we're going to have uh, clover, essential oil clover. And for alcohol... Clove. Actually, clove. not clover, yeah. but clove. 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 Thank you, Tom. And for to stop alcoholism... We're going to be looking towards rum and chamomile, correct? Yeah, those are those are those are adjuncts that, that you know you of course have to. What I have found that if people don't really have you know the desire to stop either of those, no amount of oils generally or any therapies that they do are going to work until they make the first step. Like, okay, I want to stop drinking. I want to stop smoking. Is there essential because oil they, for that? Is there, I'm sorry. Is there essential? Is there essential oil to help you with the desire to quit smoking, to quit alcoholism? Um, there are some various blends that, you know, it, I, it, when I talk to people, you know, part of it is that when I talk to people, they, like everybody's, everybody's the same and everybody's different. And so you, we all have the same body, like your body burns sugar. You know, you have the same digestive system. We all have lungs. We all have a heart. We all pump blood through our body. But that, that's how we're the same. But how we make ourselves sick is different or unique. And so, you know, so one person will tell me, well, this is, you know, something that they've happened in their lives. So I'll say, well, this essential oil and this one and this one might be your best. But somebody else will come along and I could recommend those and they don't work at all. Okay, so On, Tom, so just, somebody would need to contact you directly in order yeah. to, for you to get a feel for that, correct? You know, as a general sort of adjunct or something that would help them, uh, uh, sort of across the board, I would say Roman chamomile would be a, a good help. But I, I could, you know, I could, there's probably ten other things I could suggest. There are oils that help, say, the the liver. When people have liver liver damage, uh, helichrysum is an oil that will help with that. And helichrysum is an oil that unless you 
get from the very best companies, they're just junk. They do not work. And it's a very expensive oil. And one of the things it does is it helps your body, it helps you to process, process anger. You know, so if, if you've got a lot of anger going on, it, and that's what one of the things that damages your liver, I believe, is anger and resentment that you keep tightly hmm. held in your body instead of uh, expressing it and getting it out of the way. You know, okay. like, you know, screaming into a pillow, kicking a, <laughs> a yeah. ball around. Or, a lot you know. of people who have hepatitis, that's a liver disease also. So you think hellerism, uh, essential oil hellerism, help with that? Yeah, well, I had a client many years ago, you know, who had a, a liver disorder, and he did 40 days in a row, and his hepatitis was gone. I mean, I was just recently, well, it's now almost a year ago, I was treating somebody who needed a liver transplant, and um, he was using essential oils. I was, you know, putting essential oils on twice a day and doing the master cleanse, and when six weeks later, when he had another enzyme count, his enzyme count was almost normal. Hmm. You know that is super. So, okay, we in so ten minutes. Yes, we into ten minutes into the first. I, we could really go all day on the, each of these <laughs> topics, but <laughs> I got it. next. Uh, but people be begging me, uh, begging me for uh, information on this. Um, arthritis and number two, arthritis and migraine headaches. How does people? How does essential oils help with that? Well, um, migraines, it, it, there's very many different types that, 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 uh, of, of sim or things that in the body that can cause migraines. But uh, it's, my experience has been that people on an emotional level, it's feeling like pe they're being harassed. They're feeling pressured uh, to, to do something by, from someone or even just from their, their own um, state of mind and so anything again that will, will calm them that and it could be um, orange essential oil or lemon or uh, again lavender is a good one um, which one do you think if a peppermint, and peppermint actually peppermint is very very commonly used for headaches and can be used um, to help with migraines as well um, arthritis there's um, there's been some different eucalyptus species that uh, that I know, and I'll tell you why. Is that eucus, eucalyptus breaks up and loosens mucus in your body, and I believe, as Stanley Burroughs writes, is that he believed that uh, arthritis is just sort of crystallized mucus, hardened mucus in the joints and around the tissues in the bones and joints and stuff. And so when you um, like, I had arthritis in my neck. Mm -hmm. And I was told I needed that surgery in two places. Well, I used to drink a quart of milk a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I did that every day. And then after I, I did the master cleanse for 100 days and stopped drinking milk, my neck problems went away, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the newer information I've been hearing, some people believe that eating wheat products is also largely uh, responsible for causing arthritis. And that's because a lot of wheat products for most people, is creates, again, mucus. Their body produces mucus to stop the irritation of the, the gluten. Gluten is a, an inflammatory in the body. So if we've got things that cause inflammation, you know, in our bodies, then arthritis can be one of the natural outgrowths of this. So things that break up and loosen mucus in the body are lemon essential oil, uh, eucalyptus, uh, and there's many types of eucalyptus, polybractia, uh, radiata, dives, uh, globulus, uh, citriodora. There's, you know, there's actually hundreds of different types of eucalyptus trees. Not that they're all available. There's, I've seen as many as six or seven different eucalyptus species that you could get use as essential oils. And uh, so anything that sort of uh, helps with breaking up mucus, you know, and there's those. Um, Anytime you you know put an oil on and you put peppermint on top of it, you know topically peppermint is kind of a, a stimulant. It, it's a it's a catalyst. It'll make that oil work better. So you'll probably find something like uh, a peppermint on top of that could be very useful. And this is not an essential oil, but I know people who have used uh, uh, apple cider vinegar topically mm -hmm. on arthritis and swear by that as well, or drinking it. 
as well. This <laughs> also works. For, and there's you know generally generally lemon juice is another thing because lemons lemons break up and loosen mucus in the body. So there's lots of different ways. Um, and I like I'm kind of a, a multi avenue approach. I will use essential oils. I use diet. I'll use color. I'll get people to. Uh, and then, of course, you know, change the way they're eating, you know, because people don't get sick for no reason. You know, like they, they're often do the very things that uh, are, are making them sick are the very things that are their favorite foods. You know, like mm-hmm. I always tell people who have arthritis, stay away from tomatoes, potatoes, eggplant and peppers, because those things always irritate arthritis. Mm. So is that enough irrita- uh, information for that? Uh, yeah. What were those things that irritate arthritis again? They're the the um, nightshade family: T- tomatoes, <laughs> potatoes, peppers, and eggplant. I didn't know potatoes can aggravate arthritis. Yes, they do. White potatoes are the worst. Wow, actually, and that they it- give, and they give you headaches and migraines as well. As I've seen, I've had people where I just get them to stop eating. Um, potatoes and or all these foods and their migraines stop with just not eating those okay is that for migraines or, uh, or is that for arthritis both okay tomatoes uh tomatoes potato white potatoes and what yeah tomatoes potatoes eggplant and peppers hmm. i used to get headaches a lot isn't and uh, i ate all of those foods isn't oh. cay- cayenne uh cayenne pepper in the master cleanse well cayenne pepper is a is a is a nightshade, but when you're on the master cleanse, you might consume at most a half a teaspoon in a day. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about sweet peppers, where people eat a whole pepper at a meal or more, where people put peppers in their salad and they have peppers in their stir fry and peppers in whatever. You know, like I don't eat peppers anymore. If I, the thing about hot peppers is because they're hot, they. Um, they have the properties to cancel out the negative aspect, mm-hmm. you know. So hot peppers generally aren't hurtful to you because you can't eat enough of them to cause you any grief. But it's more that like you know the yellow, green, red, sweet peppers. Those are the ones that uh, you need to avoid. Okay, for what I got from basically from that is if you got uh, arthritis, you want to use essential oil, eucalyptus, and the best one to use for migraine is peppermint essential oil. That might be the best one. Now, it depends, again, on the individual. Um, somebody might find that uh, lemon will you know, work better for them with their arthritis, or the lemon might work really well with their migraine. You know, you, you don't always know. And I mean, I've had, I once had, now that I'm thinking about it, I had a woman who came to me who was getting a migraine, and she drank something, I get, you know, had an essential oil, and she took it internally, in water, she put four drops in, and it had mostly just peppermint in it. And within two minutes, her migraine was gone. Okay, so I I'm just it, this is a story I just remembered. I mean, this happened 15, 20, no, this was probably 25 years ago that this woman came over, and I just I'm not, you know, because her headache was so bad. I said, try this, you know, it was just kind of a something to tr- you know do spontaneously. Try the peppermint oil, and it went away. Yeah, okay, super. What about the arthritis testimonial? Well, um, arthritis is more one of the more difficult conditions that I treat. You know, I they find to me it's easier to almost treat you know heart disease or cancer than arthritis because <laughs> it's it's all this crystallized sort of mucus and stuff. Um, you know, my uh, former wife had rheumatoid arthritis in her knees hmm. and stuff, and um, we didn't. You we used color and the master clean. She did a hundred days of the master clean, and it cleared up. But it's you know, unless you get people to stop eating, you know, those very foods that are causing them the grief, like the nightshades and Tomatoes, dairy products and, and wheat. Yeah. And then you use these oils, then you would see a dramatic difference and probably in a matter of days uh, they would uh, they'll start to, you know, feel better. Anything that's kind of a you know, a high antioxidant, you know. Mm-hmm. Like clove oil, you know, like you know what the ORAC yes. uh, scale is? Yes. Okay. You know what the highest tested ORAC scale uh, item is or, you know, food substance? Was it turmeric or what is it? No. It's clove, clove oil. Yep, clove. It, 
Yeah, it it tested I think 1.5 million or so on the ORAC scale. Can we take that doing a master cleanse? Well, I have done that. You can take it. It's a very hot oil. You would put it in a capsule, but again, you've got to make sure you're getting pure clove oil, and. If people will tell you, oh, their oil is pure, and if that's the case, tell them you want to see the the test, the GC, what are called the GCs or the gas chromatographs. Mm -hmm. The company that I use, they have every bottle has an, a a number on the bottle, and that number is gives you the access code to their the the test, the chemical test to 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 prove their purity. So if you contact the company, they when you give them that number, they can email you the the gas chromatographs and the companies that did this because they will not sell anything that uh, doesn't meet those world there's the world standards are set by the French government the, it's called the AFNOR standards and that doesn't mean anybody has to meet them but if you want to say your oil is more or less like therapeutic or that you can take or consume internally they should meet those standards and there's no other companies that really even test their they don't even test their oils Okay. All right. Now, um, we're going over to the next one. Uh, question number three, essential, order, essential oils for memory and critical thinking skills for high school and college, also um, for Alzheimer's disease. But I've heard, I heard a lot of people uh, using essential oils lacking to increase your memory by 75%, like rosemary can do that. I mean, I heard, uh, what's your take on that? Which essential oils? For my well, uh, been, daughter to make good grades in school. There have been clinical studies, and what they do is they have students study and put peppermint on themselves or smell peppermint. Mm -hmm. And then when they are in their exam, in their test, you know, and having to uh, uh, write their paper or whatever, and if they take peppermint and smell it, that smelling of the peppermint will bring back the memory of what they were studying. Mm -hmm. And then. You know, these are clinical studies that have been done. So peppermint is a good one. But you could be studying and smelling rosemary or it could be maybe um, orange oil or something. But peppermint tends to work quite well. Now, there are compounds in essential oils that are called sesquiterpenes. Mm -hmm. And sesquiterpenes are hydrocarbons that have 10 carbon atoms in the molecule. And these compounds pass through the blood-brain barrier and actually get into your brain. And one of the things they do is they clean the receptor sites in your brain so that you can think and more clearly. I'll give you an example. One of my friends, and he was in his 50s, and he was going, to, go, going back to school. He went back to school and he said, mm -hmm. Tom, I need some oils so that I can improve my memory, so mm -hmm. that I can go to school. And I said, well, I've got two different blends, and I'm not going to give you the names of these. And I said, come and try these. And I let him smell one, and he said, no, that's not working. And I had just literally come back from a, co a conference, and I had a new bottle, a sample. And this sample was specifically for brain function. Mm -hmm. And it didn't even have a proper label on it. And I let him smell it. And as I let him smell it, he said, that's the one. And he took it from my hand, and he said, I'm taking this. I said... <laughs> Bob, that's my, I just got this. this is, he said, I don't care. He said, I'm taking this. And that was it. He, and then I had another uh, situation where I had uh, you know, a woman who had called me and wanted to buy a color lamp. And so I talked to her about it. And, and uh, she had um, fibromyalgia and, and uh, brain fog where she couldn't think very clearly. And so I, she tells me where she lives. I said, I'll come and I'll deliver the lamp. And later that day, she called me back and said, I want to cancel the order. And I said, you want to cancel the I said, you just went through this. I talked to you for half an hour about how to do this. And she said, well, my housekeeper came and my housekeeper said, you're buying a lamp? Like you can't even, you know, cook a meal. How are you going to, how are you going to work this, you know? And, and she's talking. I said, can you boil water? She keeps talking. She's not listening. And I, you know, I say louder, can you boil water? And finally, after about the fifth time that I scream into the phone, can you boil water? She hears me and she said, yes, I can boil water. I said, well, then you can use a color lamp. It's that simple. <laughs> so when I came over to her house and, you know, presented the lamp, I pulled out this bottle of oil because she didn't think very clearly. And I just waved it under her nose and she smelled that. And she just went, what is that oil? Because it was kind of like the lights came on. 
She was her mind momentarily cleared with her just smelling it because these oils, as they uh, evaporate and you breathe them up into your nose, they go into your brain in you know in a second, and they uh, and once they get in your brain, they start to work and your brain function improves. So there are you know anything that's high in sesquiterpenes, mm -hmm. uh, cedar wood is one, um, lavender has some uh, helichrysum, frankincense, uh, sandalwood, and now some of these are all, most of these are very, very expensive oils, so if you go somewhere, oh, I'm going to just go try that, and you see it as, ten, you know, for $10 or $15 or $20, you're not getting any of that oil, that's, mm -hmm. not, that's not the oil, you know, like people will buy, you will show me oil that they bought, they will say this is lavender, and I'll go, how much did you pay for it? I said, you can't even buy that. If you bought a ton of it out of France where they produce it, they couldn't sell it to you that inexpensively because it costs three times that much money to, to produce it. How mm -hmm. could they sell it for that little? Mm -hmm. And it's because it's all synthetics. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, so th there, was, there was a list there of uh, the oils that can help. As I said, the oils that are high in sesquiterpenes. But you, again, you've got to get oils that are real, that they haven't been over processed or just you know in the distillation process they cook them mm -hmm. or they overheat them and that's to save money or you know the, the plants are you know you can have a bad crop here or they've been harvested too early or I mean it, you know the, the ways that you can damage an oil uh, you know go on and on and on you know mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. the you know they often you know as they say they dilute them with various types of alcohols and I mean, I even just, I was with a friend, <clears throat> and she had some peppermint, and I had peppermint, and I said, uh, taste mine, and I put a drop on her tongue, and I took a drop of hers, and I put it on my tongue, and it is, I've never had a sens sensation like that in my life, ever, ever in my life like that, and it was some kind of a weird chemical compound that I immediately took my shirt and started wiping my tongue off because mm -hmm. I knew how toxic it was. And I went, there is, you couldn't smell it, you couldn't see it, but you could certainly taste it, that it was a very, very noxious uh, chemical. So again, you may think, oh, this is, you know, this is peppermint, smells like peppermint, it doesn't mean anything. Right, but uh, we got a bunch of single mothers, single parents out there with kids that are literally struggling in school because of this information overload. And what they want to know is, is what essential oils would they use to help these kids go from like average students to making the uh, honor roll list? Well, <clears throat> I would, there's, th this man has actually made a bottle that is to, of oil, a blend, to help do that, I can't mention the name, wow. um, but peppermint would probably be one of your best choices because peppermint is a stimulant. It mm -hmm. makes you, uh, it wakes you up, and when you're more awake, you think more clearly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lavender is another one because it calms children down as well. Mm. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, is you've got to get them off of sugar. Yeah. No, ch you know, no chocolate bars, no soda or pop, uh, you know, potato chips, you know, junk food. You just got to get them off that stuff. The things with the, that are high in saturated fats, you know, like things that are deep fried, you know, those are the worst. If you're going to, you know, fry food, you got to use coconut oil. Um, stay away from lard or Crisco or, uh, you know, any of those hydrogenated soybean or corn oils, those those you got to use all of these things in, in conjunction okay super so what you're saying that there is an oil that these kids can use to help if they're struggling in school to help them get the honor roll if they contact you you give them more information on that right sure absolutely all right that's super um going back over now can you uh give us any testimonials of any students uh, either college in college or regular high school or whatever that uh those blends actually help with um I can't, you know, offhand, I can't think of, <laughs> I mean, I, I sometimes, I've heard so many stories, I hear literally thousands of stories and people that I know him, who I are. I see them on the internet all the time about yeah, that, about you know, there's, the essential there's oils helping so kids. much stuff, you know, it, um, oh boy, I wish I could think of something. Uh, can you have uh, anything that comes to mind that you have heard? Um... Not any specific stories at the moment. Um, I, as I said, I, I, I sometimes somebody will 
a specific word or something will trigger that memory, you know, and I'll go, oh, here's a story, and I'll, and I'll sort of pull that up. I heard this like, one this uh, at one school system. <laughs> I have to bring it back up again, but the uh, one school system, these these kids was taking these essential oils. I guess they were doing pretty good because the school system told them to stop doing it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind it's kind of amazing how that they can have tools out there to help to help kids and help people and stuff out. But then, uh, you know, when they get their hands and stuff on it, they don't want you to use it. Um, don't don't have a clue why. All right. So if anybody want to help uh, needs help in school and want to know of a good essential oil or anything to help to increase their grades, please contact Tom. Tom, essential oils. Can they help anybody with Alzheimer's disease? Well, you know, these are things that, you know, the FDA doesn't want. <laughs> you can't make any claims. We can't say in this cure. We just say by coincidence they use it, they and it seems like. Oils that can help. In fact, I was on Tuesday listening to the man who owns the company that started the company, the oils that I use. And um, he told some remarkable, you know, stories. And um, he... Has uh, he created a product that has some essential fatty acids and some essential oils in it, and you take it as a supplement on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. And he said that it makes remarkable difference. Now, I went up to him and talked to him after the talk, and mentioned that uh, I had seen a TV show that my niece had worked on, and they interviewed these doctors at a clinic. And they said that Alzheimer's is caused by one thing and one thing only. And they said sugar. It's diabetes of the wow. brain. Wow. You know, and um, when I mentioned this to this man, he said he heard of a study that was done out of the University of California. This is many years ago. And they said that ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease, was, he's told me, was linked only to eating sugar. So you've got to stop sugar... And then you've got to start to use, it's, you've got to be taking um, essential fatty acids, which aren't mm -hmm. essential oils. They, you know, they're, they're, uh, a to they're, they're fatty, they're, 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 they're lipids, they're actual oil fats. Essential oils are not a fat. They are oil soluble, but they have no fat in them, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, I mean, anything that's high in sesquiterpenes will help the brain. Which I mentioned is you know frankincense, um, uh, cedar wood, uh, lavender. Uh, boy, there's you know there's if anything as I said that's high in those will help them, and they're they're finding more and more oils all the time. Peppermint again would be another one that will always help the brain. Love that peppermint. Okay, let's go on to the next one uh, for number four. What can help but get a person, give a person deep nightly sleep? What essential oil can help a person with deep nightly sleep and daily inner peace? Well, again, lavender is kind of your heel all. Lavender, like some people, what they'll do, and I, and I know it may sound like a broken record, but uh, with lavender, you can just take a few drops and put it onto a, a cotton ball or something or on a piece of cotton and stick it under your pillowcase between your pillowcase and your pillow and sleep with that in your face mm -hmm. kind of you know and it slowly evaporates and comes off and you breathe in uh, lavender it's very calming and some people put them to sleep very quickly um, with there's there's a blend that this company puts together that uh, people find will can put them to sleep on very, very quickly. My sister has a sleeping problem. She would put it on and said, not only would it put her to sleep, but she, if she woke up in the middle of the night and then used it again, she could fall right back to sleep. Yeah. One of the things about sleep, though, is that when, when I treat people out of sleep, it's only caused by one thing, and it's, most people often argue with me and go, it's too simplistic, but it's only feeling guilt. Wow. Feeling guilty. It, that's all... A sleep problem is is just feeling guilty. So th there's you know anything that makes you feel like you can forgive <laughs> will will help that. And so I I you prescribe very specific oils to help that. Uh, I've had people who have chronic sleep problems and just do the master cleanse. 
you know. But again, I'll say, do the master cleanse. Let's use lavender. Let's use this blend that helps with sleep. There's two or three different, there's, well, I could probably recommend 10 or 15 different oils, but you you got to know which, you know, you, when I have at my home well over 100 different oils. So when I, people come over, I can, you, you know right away, you can just have them smell it. Mm-hmm. And when an oil smells, you know, and I'm talking, you've got good quality oils, people will smell an oil and they'll be repulsed by it. They literally back away. That's the oil that's best for them. Wow. An oil that smells good for, to them will work as well, but not as effectively. The one that you don't like will cut deeper than the one that you do like. Hmm. And I've had oils that work, you know, spe- for specific emotional states. And as they smell them, people will be repulsed and literally back away. Like an oil that should make them happy, they, 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 they'll be repulsed by it because they're so unhappy. And it's alien to them. Wow. It's like... When I give somebody an affirmation for a specific condition, they can't remember it usually within the first five seconds. And then another 15 seconds later, they forget it again. And I say, I know this is the right one because this is so alien to you that you can't even remember it. it, It's so far out of your psyche, that's why you're so unhappy because I'm giving you something to be happy and you can't even hang on to it. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a slippery eel, like you can't hold on to it. A super. And what about the inner peace throughout the entire day? Well, um, you know, some of the tree species uh, can work very well um, because they, they're very sort of rooted in the earth. And so it could be pine or spruce or, and um, th- there's lots of different trees that, you know, and then there's, this one company has a blend of about six or seven trees. And what I do with people is I put it on their feet and I tell them and put their feet on the ground and I imagine themselves to be a tree and have roots go deep, deep into the earth. And I've had people on stage who are dizzy who, you know, have a dizziness problem, and I put that oil on them, and they, their dizziness, in a matter of seconds, will go away. Message. Wow, that is absolutely super. So, uh, the, we want to use lavender for going to sleep, and for daily inner peace, will we use what essential oil? Well, any of the tree species, like, but also orange, or grapefruit, or tangerine, um, any kind of the citrus can be very uplifting emotionally. They could, they're, they're very sort of sweet and, um, you know, like also um, cinnamon can be a nice one. Um, frankincense also. Frankincense is really good for your brain. So it kind of, it can be very um, so modulating, sort of kind of balancing the brain, you know, uh, frankincense. Okay, well, I really like it. Um, let's go ahead and go quickly through the rest of these topics right quick. Uh, what I want is I'm going to call the topic out. I want to know what essential oil works for that and if you have any testimonials for that. Would that be okay with you, Tom? Sure. All right, super. Now, uh, again, our favorite one, <laughs> money, motivation, and letting go. What essential oil? Well, um, well, motivation... Um Roman chamomile tends to work with that, uh, peppermint. Now, for creating sort of money in your life, it's a specific blend. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'll, you'd have to contact me about that. I know we can't sort of... We talked about that at the very beginning of the show, and we all oh, thank you. <laughs> and letting go. Um... It depends on, again, it, it, the, some of these are so general, I would have to know what you're letting go of. Uh, are you okay. letting go of your fear? Are you letting go of your depression? Are you letting go of your anxiety? Are you letting go of an old lover? Are you letting go of your job loss? Are you letting go? So it's it's kind of, you know, you're... I got you, I got you. Let's go back to the money part, Tom. You see, you took this particular blend and you noticed that your business uh, uh, tripled in like a few months. Well, I'm going to give you a story. When I got married last year, um, the person who did my wife's hair came to, we had a four-day wedding, <clears throat> excuse me, and the hairdresser, we invited her, and she brought her fiancé. 
and during the meal he came up to me and he was he was very interested in me and he said I really want to get to know you better I'd like to come over and have supper with you hmm. I said yeah sure so it was about three or four months later and I invited him over and we got talking about essential oils and he you know and I went on and on and and I said uh, you know this is a good oil and he said you know I'm uh, doing uh, landscaping and kind of gardening, but he said, my, I, I have virtually no business. He said, I, I said, well, you need to buy this oil. He said, how much is it? And I said, well, it's about $40. This is in Canada with the taxes and shipping and everything. And, and he said, uh, I can't afford it. I said, you can't afford to not have it. This is, this is the very thing you need. And he's going, well, you know, and he was, of course, skeptical. He didn't believe it. Like myself, I said, here's the deal. I said, his name was uh, Sham. I said, Sham, I'll give you the oil. You come to my house and you trim my hedges and clean some of the, you know, the stuff up and do $40 of work. Will you do that? He said, sure. So he takes the bottle. I don't see him for a week, for two weeks, for three weeks, for four weeks, for a month. For It's over two months go by. And I've never seen him. I've never been paid. He finally calls me. And he says, uh, hi, Tom. And he goes, this is Sean. I go, hi, Sean. I go, where have you been? And he said, well, you know, since I last saw you, he said, I've become so busy, I have no time to come and do anything at wow. your house. I'm just, I have more work. I have too much work now. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, the oil worked. And you know what he said? What? No, that's just a coincidence. And I went, shut up. You were so poor, you couldn't pay me $40 for this oil. You had no work, nothing. And now you have too much work to even come by my house and pay me. And then he said, well, okay, maybe that was, you know. Well, I gave another bottle to somebody else who does the same work. Actually, it was the acupuncturist's husband. And I didn't have the right change, and so they, I, instead of me owing them money, I wanted them to owe me the money. So I said, just pay me $5 when I see you again, because it was like all I had was $20 bills or something. And I said, just pay me. And, well, it was like six weeks later, he comes by the house to get, he said, here's the, I, he said, I would have been here earlier, but he said, my business, he said, has just taken off. He said, I tell everybody I work at, everybody's about this oil. And I said, and how many people believe you? He said, none, of, nobody. <laughs> and I go, I know it sounds too ridiculous. And it's now, and now his wife, her business is, she's, is better than ever, you know. And I could, you know, I could tell this story over and over and over. And it's, it's, it's so simple. And I, it's, it's amazing. It's one of my favorite oils and it smells really good. And I put it on my wrists. Actually, I haven't even put it on yet today. I have put in oils on, but I haven't even put that on today. I was working on my son and put a bunch of oils on him. I hear you. Oh, wow. That's well, a terrific story. Let's go on to the uh, next one, number six. Uh, what essential oils will help you with willpower to stick towards cleanses, detoxes, and diets? Oh, boy. Um, I would use, the oil I would use is Roman chamomile, again, because it's, it, it, it's this oil that gives you confidence to move on. Um, I would use uh, I, I'd use lemon oil as well. You, know, you can put it in your drink or orange. They, because they, they make you feel like more uplifted, more happy, uh, just and peppermint, things that, uh, that stimulate you to because when people are cleansing, often they are feeling crappy <laughs> and they're the, their emotions are being brought up because of the cleanse. So things that kind of help to counter that. Um, they could also take things that help to kill parasites or bacteria or funguses. So, you know, this is a little different. They could be taking oregano or thyme essential oil in capsules. Those are hot oils. They're really, you have to be careful how you use them, especially if you're not that healthy because they're kind of like fire. And if you take them internally, you may only start with two or three drops mm -hmm. of one oil in a capsule and take that about uh, three times a day. And then you kind of work up from there. And because when you, sometimes people feel sick from the overkill. Mm -hmm. What, you know, the cleanse is working. They're stirring up too many toxins and mm -hmm. too much bacteria and stuff. And so if you get something that helps to moderate that influx of stuff to kill things more quickly, 
then they're, they don't feel overwhelmed or don't go into a healing crisis, you know. Okay, super. I really love that. Um, going over to the next uh, question, which is number seven. Uh, we talk today. Oh, this month is uh, domestic violence month. Uh, what essential oils um, would help with people going through dom domestic violence or hostile environment issues, Tom? Well, to me, when I hear like violence and stuff, that's an issue of parasites. Mm -hmm. And parasites, when they live inside you, they not only eat, but they defecate. And that waste they put into your body <laughs> makes you crazy, I believe. This mm -hmm, is what mm -hmm. I believe makes people uh, suicidal, manic depressive, or violent, you know. So anything that will kill parasites. And when people, and people will know because when you start to take this stuff, you might feel a little crazier for a few days because the parasites will become even more stirred up or they will take more action to try and make you stop doing what you're doing to kill them. Mm-hmm. You know, so anything that's anti-parasitic, so um, something that has got clove, um, oregano, thyme, um, sometimes Idaho tansy, uh, raven sera, these are all oils that kill all kinds of stuff in your body. And if you take those and you start to kill um, those organisms, you become much more calm. Um, also, what might help is something like melaleuca. That helps more with, and lavender with candida. And candida uh, also makes people, you know, you know, if you get extreme cases, it really upsets their balance. Anything that upsets your mind can, can give you, a, you know, make you a, a tend towards violence or fear or any kind of um, extreme emotional state super Tom I've actually heard of uh, wives of women who are going through domestic violence issues actually use uh, essential oils and diffusers to put uh, lavender and that way when the person who's actually doing the violence both emotional and physical comes inside they so relax that the uh, lady doesn't get hurt oh absolutely like there's I can you know there's two or three blends that I would absolutely suggest I mean I've had people who are in a workplace and they, the people harass them, and I say, wear these oils. You and go. as you wear them, and they come off your skin, they will affect the way those people think and feel. And it's kind of funny, like some, you know, I have a, an oil that is to make people happy, and I put it on them, and they start to weep and cry. Mm -hmm. And they go, why am I crying? I'm supposed to be happy. I go, how can you be happy when you have all this sadness? Mm -hmm. So you have to understand how these oils work, that people may, you may recommend an oil that is to make them happy and all they do is cry and I go well you're crying because that's the first thing you got to do let go of your sadness and so um, you may find that somebody who has a lot of violence actually and I've seen this I it, I had somebody who was one of my students and he was quite a violent man and as I got to see his story he had been badly badly abused as a child and you become abusive as a way to become to keep yourself from being hurt. Protected. Like when anything comes up that you feel threatened, the thing is, you know, I'll attack first, you know, a good offense before, you know, I'll attack them before they can attack me. And it's it's just a twist of logic in the mind. So yeah, lavender, uh, again, any of the sort of uh, citrus oils can be very good. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, alang alang, uh, spruce, uh, you know, frankincense, again, there's, there's, uh, you know, if you look in a book for, say, depression, there might be 20 essential oils that might be useful. And might, you know, I've had people where I'll try 18 of them and none of them work, and then you get to the last two, and then one of those works. So it's, 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 for many people, I wouldn't want them to go out and buy 20 oils. Right. And find that, you know, that, you know generally you want to start with sort of the simplest uh, so pro like I, you know, I like people. Let's, let's try three oils with you. Let's not buy thirty. Let's buy you know three or four and see how those work for you. And sometimes, if you get the right sort of combinations with people, they sleep better. They're more calm and relaxed. Their health gets better. They start thinking more clear. And it, it, they don't have to have uh, you know fifty different things or twenty different things. It, it, you know, just sort of a, a small handful. And as they become comfortable with that, then they start to expand and go, okay, now I want to treat my lungs, or now I've got a skin condition, or now I want to get to my headache, or whatever, and it's, and, and that's, it, I, I'll warn people that 
you know, when I started using oils as a skeptic, my first order was $100. And then within a few months, I was spending five or $600 a month because I wanted every oil I could get. I because there were, I just saw that this was, this was kind of like the icing on the cake. I hear you. So for domestic violence and hostile environments, number one for the uh, perpetrator, you thinking they have a problem with parasites, you need to get it out of side of them. And for number two, if you wanted to protect yourself from being hurt by people who's trying to be hateful towards you, you would uh, wear something like lavender, citrus, or some, some type of spruce scent, either on yourself or some type of diffuser that will spread it throughout the yeah. home or environment. Now, helichrysum would be another good one for people who have anger or rage. Helichrysum helps to sort of, as I've been told and stuff, to help dissolve and break up anger in, in their... You see... You kind of have to understand how how emotions affect the body. When you have a specific emotion or feeling, you create toxins in a very specific part of your body, like your liver. When you have anger and rage, it's your liver the first place it goes. And then depending on the type of anger or who or what, it'll then go to different organs. And when you uh, start to cleanse the body, that's why people will start to feel angry or sad because the toxins that got put in those areas of the body, starts to, they start to come out and leach out. And as they leach out, those old feelings come back. And so depending on, you know, say somebody, they have all this anger and rage because they were sexually abused. So there's specific ones that you might want to use that. And it could have been somebody who's physically abused. So you'd want to use a different blend for that. Or somebody physical and emotional. So there's, there's again, you kind of have to, um, I, I always talk to the person and I get, I, I, like, I want to know what ball of wax I'm dealing with. Is, right. is it like one like this or is it one like this or is it a one that's orange or green or blue? You know, there's yeah, all of these I different sort of components yeah. to look at. So, you say basically, Tom, when my experience with dealing with domestic violence and hostile situations, the person who's actually creating a hateful environment, doing the hitting, uh, doing the uh, demeaning of people emotionally and stuff, are not the ones that's looking for help. It tends to be the people who are actually being hurt. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, and that's why I was talking about the, the lavender, the spruce, the uh, citrus, and yep. stuff like that as a means of protection. Because let's also face it, those people who tend to be hurt tend not to leave this situation as well. And they say that the number one killer of women happens to be domestic violence. It's men, yes. Yes. Yeah, I know that. Yes. There is actually, there is a blend specifically for feeling uh, like you're under attack. There is that, you know. That's uh, and you you put it on your shoulders and people are, you know, um, I mean I've I've worked with uh, you know, I've worked with people who have suffered like, torture who have been where the people have taken cigarette butts and butt them on them mm. and stuff so I've I do have like you know th that would I could do a whole show on on this topic it's it's quite. You know, it's quite disturbing, you and know. Also and also bullying as well. I think that yeah, wearing uh, that lavender on you to help with that. And those are people who have been bullied themselves and often, you know, tortured or irritated. And so it's, there's a whole, there's, you know, any number of uh, sort of avenues that have to be explored and, and, and dealt with. Uh, you can start with an essential oil and sometimes you can see... I, everything will change immediately within minutes or, you know, with just one essential oil. But sometimes it'll be an essential oil, it'll be, you know, various therapy, they got to do this, they got to do five or six or seven or eight things. They've got to they've got to fix all of these uh, things that are linked together. You can't just, you know, it's like we're mind, body, and spirit. You just can't fix the body and ignore the, you know, the mind and spirit. That is so true. Let's go on to our next one. And I don't know if essential oils can help with this. Sexually transmitted diseases. Can essential oils help with that? Well, again, we're into really kind of scary territory with the FDA. Um, but I'm not saying that it cures it. I'm just saying if there's any stories of people happening to hit, use it, and coincidentally it helped. Yes, I, I mean, I know absolutely. I mean, I've... You know, I've seen where melaleuca, which is an antibacterial, and especially um, Melissa essential oil, you know, where people have used it for, um, you know, cold sores, you know, cold sores are a type of, you know, 
uh, you know, and herpes and uh, all of those are all linked together. And uh, so an oil that will work for, you know, a cold sore will work for those other ones, at least that I've seen. Um, and I have to say that every essential oil has antibacterial, antiviral, or antifungal qualities, but some are much more specific and uh, effective than others and it so it depends on what it is that you're treating so you know an std is it a viral or is it bacterial mm -hmm. because if it's viral you'll use antiviral oils if it's bacterial antibacterial and that's you know i think this is an area that it would be very dangerous to to say even though that i know they work and i've seen them work and to even make a comment could okay. you don't have to make a comment would you be willing to talk to if anybody has that situation who's listening to my show would you really be willing to talk to them about that yeah what i tell people is i would say if i were in your position there if you i know. had this i would do this i can't say i can't prescribe in a sense exactly. i would just say this is what i i found in my experience and mm -hmm. this is what's worked for me i mean like I've seen, like, I've treated somebody who, a dentist who had carpal tunnel, mm -hmm. and I put lemongrass and balsam fir, and I could, on her, and, and within sec, you know, like, that didn't, I'm sorry, that didn't work for her. I had, she did the lemonade for 10 days, and it went away. And then when I started using oils, I, usually within two to three seconds, but I did that for myself. I, my wrist was hurting, and it was hurting for weeks, and finally mm -hmm. I put, <laughs> I finally put the oils on, and within three seconds, it went away. It's never bothered me again. Like one application, and that you know my own experience. So that's you know easy enough to say. So as far as an STD, I fortunately you know I guess you're, you know I've never had. I can't speak. Well, we have a, my um, own experience. Yeah, if you check out the internet, well, if you just check it, STDs are an epidemic that's going on throughout the nation in the entire world. So yeah. anything that you can use in order to help to make your immune system stronger or possibly to alleviate the, uh, whatever's going with you is uh, is absolutely it's a good thing. You know, we're not saying that there's no uh, that there's a cure for anything out there. We're just saying coincidentally, if you should use something and you just happen to get better. But in all cases, we still do seek medical help, you know. Uh, from a doctor or someone like that, but in, you know, uh, we just staying stuff that we can use in order just for us to be healthy. And again, you said uh, it was malaleuca oil, and I never heard of Melissa oil. Melissa is it's the same family as peppermint and spearmint, and it's a plant that produces very little oil, so it's a very very expensive oil. Now the common name is lemon balm. Mm-hmm lemon balm and you can buy it in it'll be in tea and stuff but it it produces so little oil it's it's like it's it's one of the most it's it's only second to um rose essential oil mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like a small bottle of rose essential oil is close to two hundred dollars that's a five meal that's pure though that's not diluted and remember why i said i told you that my rich people my rich friends or my friends who got money are the ones who's going to do essential oils because these yeah. bad boys are it's, they can't get up there they definitely can't get up there all right so if anybody got any problem with stds do not contact me contact tom okay but uh going on to our next question uh number this is our last question tom all right uh a lot of people out there got both to uh, toxic mold and termites in their home how can essential oils help with that well um I absolutely do know that essential oils, depending you know what you use, will keep insects away. One of the things that works generally quite well is peppermint. Mm -hmm. It's such a volatile, and it's the menthol, which is one of the compounds in peppermint, that will drive uh, insects away. Another thing that can work, and this is not actually an essential oil I've heard from, is also cayenne pepper. Wow. But... Um, what I would do is I would diffuse I would diffuse various oils into my house. I would try cinnamon, clove, um, oregano, uh, peppermint, um, citronella. Well, citronella is an oil. Citronella is widely widely used as a bug you know a repellent. But when you've got um, toxic mold, you need stuff that will. Uh, you know kill you know kill that mold and those all of those will work fairly well like for so if you've got termites you're going to be you know you're going to be using peppermint 
um, citronella, uh, cl I, would, I think clove, uh, and clove is, will also help probably with the black mold. As I, I do know that oregano and thyme can be very effective. Another thing that might work very well uh, for toxic mold, but I don't know for sure, and but it might it might help very much with um, uh, termites. Might be uh, cedar wood. Mm -hmm. Might also try that out. But if you burn frankincense resin, and you can get frankincense burners. You know, it's a, they're electric. I have one in in my home, and it's uh, you know it's an electric little electric plate. And you take your frankincense resin that comes right off of the tree and set it on, and it burns it. And interestingly enough, in that heating of the resin produces compounds that's not found in the essential oil. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, a unique process to to burn frankincense. I go when I moved into my house, uh, if, you know, almost four years ago, it had a kind of an unusual smell. And so what I did was I burned a bunch of, you know, if like for a day, I just had it, you know, ramped up and filled the whole house with frankincense and it's got then kind of a, a, a you know a woodsy smoky smell but um after a day or so that goes away and your smell is gone so there's a, a number of different sort of things you can do well they say that uh, lemongrass and thyme actually kills mold i'm sorry what lemongrass and thyme 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 essential oil kills mold lemongrass and what was the other one uh, thyme, T H Y M. Oh, oh, thyme. Yeah, I mentioned. Yeah, it's thyme. Mm -hmm. Thyme. I, I actually do. I mean, I know somebody who's done research, and I know that oregano, and thyme, and uh, there's clove, cinnamon, uh, melaleuca. There's blends that are made up that mm -hmm. will actually work quite well. And I didn't mention lemongrass, but lemongrass actually makes a lot of sense. Lemongrass helps with uh, it's a it's a any of the, what are called caustic oils. They're high in what are called phenols. So cinnamon, clove, uh, lemongrass, peppermint, any of the citrus oils, or orange, thyme, mountain savory, um, and I'm missing a few others. Uh, all of these are um, hot oils, and they they pretty much drive out or kill any kind of you know thing that shouldn't be in or around you that are healthy because that's what they do they keep the plants healthy so they sort of drive away yeast moles funguses viruses bacterias etc etc okay so, you know, so we take a diffuser put something like lime or uh, lemongrass in it and it what is a diffuser anyway for those who don't know okay so a diffuser is not something there you put oil on a on a you know, on water with a candle underneath. That's not a diffuser, and that doesn't work. You have uh, it's a device that blows air through the essential oil and makes it into such a fine mist that it'll actually float in the air. It diffuses into the air. The whole uh, body, the, the the whole all the constituents in the oil will be blown into the air. When you do something over water what will happen is only certain constituents will evaporate off and it's not doesn't work very effectively you need something that actually blows the oil into the air and and, and will fill the entire room it will get onto the walls it'll get onto the ceiling it'll get into the carpet it'll it'll get everywhere and you and if you have a fairly bad uh, and you know infestation of termites or you have a lot of black mold you may have to do several bottles now this company that I work with they have a household cleaner a spray mm -hmm. and what I've done where I've had ants in the house I just take this cleaner and I just spray the area that uh, they come in and that that stops them it's just generally that's all you have to do and these cleaners and stuff they're you, you they're not recommended that you drink mm -hmm. but you can get you know they're not toxic or anything you can get them on your skin you can wash yourself with them but i do all my household cleaning with uh, a combination of uh probably about seven or eight essential oils okay. and uh it's it, it'll clean off uh scuff marks it'll clean you know kill almost all the germs and viruses bacteria there's all kinds of studies you know clinical studies uh, university studies that will show the uh, effectiveness or effect uh, efficiency of how these oils will work to kill um, 
very you know well, you know just about anything and everything and again it's finding the right oil or combination of oils to address whatever problem that you have um, you can't make any specific claims I mean I know mm-hmm. I, I could I'd like to tell a bunch of stories <laughs> of, you know direct experience of things that I've seen but uh, you know they're generally they're you know Okay, I, not I, well taken by the authorities. No, so. we we we've been there. We've definitely been there. Okay, Tom. Uh, thank you for your time. Let's go over rehash. Uh, today we've covered stop alcoholism and smoking, or essential oils for that. Essential oils for arthritis, migraine headache. Uh, essential oils for memory and critical thinking skills. Essential oils for deep nightly sleep and daily inner peace. Uh, simply uh, essential oils for money. Essential oils for willpower. Essential oils for uh, domestic violence in hostile environments. Uh, essential oils for sexually transmitted diseases. Essential oils for toxic mold and termites uh, in your house. Uh, those are all. Um, this show is being recorded, so if any of you like to look at these topics again, I will definitely look towards. Uh, I would definitely would love for you to uh, get back with us on that after you do watch it. Um, tell us more about how to contact you, Tom. Well, I have a website. It's uh, www.vitagem.com. I have a f- email, which is tom at vitagem.com. I do have a phone number. My phone number is in my book. Now, the thing is, you have to. I'm on the West Coast. I'm on Pacific time. So if you call, uh, you have to call after 9 o'clock my time. I will not pick up the phone before 9 o'clock, so don't bother <laughs> and don't wake me up. I have a baby as well mm-hmm. that's sleeping. Uh, and that number is 250-388-4102. And I would be more than happy to talk to you for a few minutes. I will not go on at length for an hour. I don't I don't have time to talk to everybody for an hour. Mm-hmm. But I'd be more than willing to give you a, a few minutes of your time. Some people want to set up a consultation for a half an hour. That's uh, by all means, we can do that. Uh, if you want to uh, get some essential oils, I will be more than happy to sort of set you up with that. And um, uh, I'm, I'm more than willing to give, you know, if people will do, make the effort, if I'm going to give them the, my time and, mm-hmm. and, and effort, I, as long as they're going to do what I suggest, I'm more than happy to help them. I don't like talking to somebody for three quarters of an hour and then uh, they never listen to anything you do. You no. You said three quarters of your time. Oh, I love that. Let me tell you, look, I love it because I like Roman chamomile. That was mm-hmm. worth my time. I went like, oh my gosh, you don't know how many people looking for that one little nugget. I mean, a lot of times you get ready to go for wrestling. I mean, you got this. You can whoop everybody in practice, but <laughs> when you actually get out there and have to play a game or have to do your martial arts tournament and stuff, do you, you end up defeating yourself? You know? Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that black that 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 black chamomile was definitely something I was looking for. I'm definitely going to order. I'm definitely going to get some of that stuff. So, y'all people out there in the martial arts circuit, y'all definitely watch out. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm going to go ahead and end the show. Uh, any last thing you like to say, Tom? I would just like to say thank you very much for the opportunity to be here and share this information. Um, it was it's. There's, you know, I'd like to tell people, you know, there's nothing that you can't overcome if you take the right steps. And it's only knowledge that's going to get you there. And you've got to find the right information. And I have to say, I was so lucky that uh, one of my students made me (laughs) try these oils. Mm -hmm. And very quickly, I found out that they work. And, uh, you know, I tell people, you don't have to trust me. You don't have to believe me. Find out from your own experience, and then when that happens, you'll get, you'll say thank you so much for making me do that. So, uh, you know, so you know everybody that's out there, you know, know that there's if there's a will, if there's a will, there's a way. You know, use your mind to to create the opportunity to make yourself well. The, the, the tools will come. In my book, I wrote, I want to be happier, I want to be healthier, I want to be more fulfilled, and that's when everything changed. Even though I, re- I thought it was all <laughs> quackery and resisted it at first, it you know, it's you know I'm only here because of of, of testing it myself. 
Mm, I hear personal experience definitely says a lot. Okay, everyone out there, my name is Malik L. Train, certified personal trainer, host of Health Awareness Talk. Uh, today, I interviewed Mr. Tom Woloshin. Um, he's the owner of Vita Gym Enterprises. Again, wonderful talking to you. See you, Tom. Okay, thank you so much, Malik. Uh, thank you, too. Bye-bye. Bye.